God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen, my friends. And amen. A few announcements for you, as you can see on the screen behind me, are, of course, follow along in your programs as well. There are guest cards in the pews. If you're a guest today, we'd love you to fill one of those out. On the opposite side of the prayer cards. Because we pray for each other, as you can see inside of our programs. Henceforth, if you'd like to drop a prayer request off and mark it for the pastor only, I'll only see it. So if it's for us to pray for each other, then mark that as well in there. <coughs> drop that card off in the offering plate, which you can find right by where Dale was handing out programs this morning. There is your group tonight at 6.30 p.m. And giving statements are in the back of the sanctuary near where they No, nope, they're not back there. So, there are no giving statements back there. <laughs> Ignore that. I don't know why I put it on there, but there's none. So, they should be in the mail for you shortly. Marvelous Mondays tomorrow night. We're still looking for a couple of folks who are willing to help serve dinner. If you like working with kids, well, Mondays are a blast here. We eat at 5.15. It is a chaotic <coughs> wonder. If you'd like to come, make sure you check in with Sandra Rice and myself. You can always use help. Last week, we had more than 30 students here with almost 10 kids involved with our skit that night as well. So we've got some neat stuff going on. If you're interested, that's Monday nights. Um, meanwhile, February 4th is the Super Bowl, and here we will also have the Super Bowl, which is next week. If you're interested in making a soup to win the Super Bowl, well, S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl, <coughs> then make sure you sign up outside the church office, which is downstairs right by the but the main hallway there where the ladies' restroom is, on the other side of the room, hall from the ladies' restroom that is, I should say. So if you're an asset, please sign up for that. And then after the 11 o'clock service next week, will be our version of the Super Bowl as we chow down. If you know, if you've been there before, you know how good that is. So that's next Sunday. We sign up if you're able to make a suit. <coughs> Following Sunday, February 11th, is our church fun day over Cool Spring Fitness. From 2 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it is a great time at Cool Spring where we pretty much have the run of the place on the whole. Um, you don't have to bring kids. You're going to show up. That's from 2 to 4 o'clock. It's a great time. So again, that's next Sunday. I'm sorry, the 11th. Next Sunday is the Super Bowl. Let me not get ahead of myself too much here. Parents Night. Co-group is sponsoring Parents Night here at the church February 16th, right after Valentine's Day. If you're looking for a night to drop off your little blessings, <laughs> and I bet there's some nights they don't feel like little blessings, and some days they definitely are. But at least have a night out. Details are on the screen. There are your programs as well. If you're interested, though, that is that night, February 16th. Put it down in your calendars now. And also, if you're interested in Right Now Media, it's a free online resource we have through the church here with Christian programming videos, teaching elements, and whatnot. Just contact us in the church office. We can get you that information easily. Also, we have growth groups starting up next week. In other words, that first full week of February. Now, the Wednesday night young adults group may be changing to Thursday night. We're going to work on that and make sure we have child care and whatnot. So that's in the works but we're at least looking at those different groups. If you haven't been in a growth group before, it's a small group where we'll intentionally look at the Bible. We'll be using Adam Hamilton's newer book, Creed, uh, as we study the Apostles' Creed together. If you're interested in reading Creed, go right ahead, but we're trying to now make that a requirement. Never has been a requirement to read before, but we're going to look instead to make this accessible as much as possible. So, if you're interested, Check it out. Contact us in the church office. If you don't know any of those group leaders, whether it be Denise Moore or Bob Paul or Sandra and Larry Rogers or Dick and Wendy Carlson, um, contact us in the church office if you don't know. But it's moment for a moment of recognition. We need to say thank you. Thank you to those folks who have given up of their time to intentionally lead those groups. So although Karen Hutchison's not here, we want to make sure we say thank you to Karen Little and Doug and April Edney, who have led a group as well as well as Larry and Sandra Rogers, as well as Denise Moore, as well as Bob Fala, as well as, who else did I forget? <laughs> Linda Carlson, and, she, uh, and the other guy who helps. <laughs> yeah, I know, whatever. Linda and Dick Carlson were hosting as well. <coughs> uh, and then, of course, there's the Young Adults Group on Wednesdays and possibly Thursday nights. We're working on that. Thank you to those folks who want to give their time and their energy and their hearts 
so we can be growing in our relationships with Jesus Christ. Friends, why don't we greet one another with the love of Christ? <laughs> It's number four. Funky. Check, 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 check. I took another one. You could have had it. That's so weird. It's like not coming through volume wise. Let's see up top. Yeah, it's jacked up. Check. And you broke it. Must be lots of it. Oh, no, How's your horse? Better? Good. Very good. So I'm for 
doors and the other one. I pick up litter when I see it around the hole. 
Here's some ways you guys can help. You have candy wrappers? Not that I ever give candy away in church. Yeah, but pick up the wrappers. Try to make bankers when somebody gets one of those dumb dumbs while it pops in the back of the church, unwraps it and throws the wrapper on the ground. Yeah, you know, they're to take care of what God's given us. No, well, means to not litter and pick up after ourselves. But why do I do that? It's nice otherwise to take care of things. But it's because of what God's given me. When he sent Jesus to die for me, that changed everything. So it's one way for me to say thank you. That's how I take care of everything. So, just like I say, take, say thank you to Braden. Take care of his car. It's been in my office for months. I'm going to make sure it sticks around. I'm not going to use a hammer on it. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm not going to try to lose it. I want to take care of it. Just like with Braden's car. I'm going to do the same thing with the earth that God gave us. Make sense? Let's pray. Father, help us to take care of what you've given us. Thank you so much. Pray and bless us with this wonderful, wild world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, ultimately, though, God's going to make this world even a better place. We'll talk about that more later. But what I have for you here now is getting back at some old stuff. Like leftovers. <laughs> this is not last week's salmon that's stuck in the fridge, which we lost. Though. Nope. We have M&M's there. We've got granola bars there. We've got some Laffy Taffy here. So if you want any, go right ahead. Grab a couple pieces. They're all leftovers. Thank you so much, guys. But don't drop your wrappers on the floor. You can't clean up after yourself. Go, no, Mark, go ahead, drink whatever you like. If you don't want anything, take it. Friends, what do you think you've Thanks for this morning. What would you like to praise God for who God is? And is there anything we need to be praying for? Connie.
Okay. All right. Thanks, Martha. So praise God that the worst case scenarios it sounds like <coughs> they pulled out with uh, Joey's name. Is that a good way to put it? Thanks, Martha. Friends, Aaron. Rick, I drew a blank for a second. Don't mind me. Just make fun of me later. It happens all the time. Sorry, Rick. Landon's under the weather a little bit. <coughs> yeah, I've been praying for Landon, Jake, and as well, who's fighting off who knows what, but the kids had a run over this winter. Thanks, Rick. Marianne. Uh, my husband underwent surgery, and his lab results were good. For, he got 13 negative lymph nodes in his rectal cancer uh, diagnosis, so he's on the recovery list. Beautiful. So keep praying for house recovery. Pray for Mary Ann with house recovery. <laughs> <laughs> We make the joke, but sometimes it's the caregiver who pays the biggest price. So, although it's a joke there, and I'll tell how I said it, it's also not a joke. Too. So keep praying for our how. Thanks be to God that the results came back the way they did. Wow. Um, a dear friend from high school lost her mother yesterday, so pray for the Allen family. Okay. Pray for the Allen family. Friends, is there anything else? Linda. My sister Jean is having my surgery on Tuesday to repair a hole in her retina. <coughs> so we're praying for Linda's sister Jeannie, who's having surgery Tuesday to repair a hole in her retina. Okay. Thanks. All right, friends. Is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for we've got this. Anything we ought to be praying for? Then why don't we go to the Lord together in prayer? Father, how cool it is we can talk with you. What a gift it is. For those of us who may think that I should say, Father, thou, it is wonderful to speak with you. And yet, Father, you, you seem to converse with us human beings in the ways that we might talk with each other. So what a gift it is. What a joy it is. How cool it is that we can talk with you. If we can't see you, but we can see the results of what you've done in our world. We may even be able to feel you at times in our lives. But see you, and yet we can still talk with you. Better than a cell phone, better than trying to email or text someone. We can talk with you right now. Well, the beautiful thing is that you see what's going on in our lives, and instead of being an overbearing parent, you give us leeway to make mistakes as we talk with you. What an incredible gift it is. Because if I call President Trump right now, he's not going to take my call. How many people do we try to reach out to who ignore us? You don't. What a gift it is. You know the number of hairs on our head. You provide for us like the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. And you hear us. So Father, for some of us, we have weighty things on our hearts. For others of us today, we are filled with joy. What a gift it is that we can come to you. So Father, at this point, we're asking that you would hear us as we talk to you. Father, hear our prayer. Cancel your cares on him because he cares for you. We claim for that promise from the Bible, Father, as we give you thanks for your good work in our lives. Hear us. And Father, because we can be weak, we can be wayward, help us to see what you've done in our lives. Remind us. We thank you for how you brought Harold through the surgery so well. We praise you for the results. We pray for the healing for him. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we also praise you for Joey's exploratory surgery and they rule out some of the worst case scenarios. We pray for healing for Joey. And we pray, Father, that you make clear what's going on. It gives him you know, the, the headaches and whatnot. We're asking, Father, that you got it direct as we thank you, pray, and move him forward. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So, Father, we come before you. We're asking to be with the Allen family <clears throat> in the midst of their loss. Well, uh, friends as well. We're asking, Father, to be with Jeannie, Linda Carlson's sister. In the midst of her surgery Tuesday. We're praying for the Holy Spirit to move more. Father, we ask to be with Jean and Mink tomorrow in the family as they stand by. 
We pray for healing in Jesus' name. But before you land in Jacob, we pray for healing for Landon in Jesus' name. Father, we're asking that you would be with Brooke and the family as they wait for her surgery. We pray for healing in Jesus' name. And Father, we also come before you and ask that you provide the ways you want for the ceiling renovation here and even more so the, the gift that Bob means his legacy is to us. <coughs> Father, you hear us. And the silly things that we ask you for and the incredibly painful things we're asking for you to move work in our lives about. The things that weigh so heavily upon us that in a few weeks won't even matter to us and the things that we don't even grasp but how important they are. And you are the God who hears. We may not be able to see you, but you are the God who still is listening to us. Help us to hear your voice. We want to thank you and praise you. As we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, why don't we stand together as we continue to worship the Ask Me Sing. <laughs> Prepared as a bride, 
beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and the liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Friends, it's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Side note. Now, Lee Shelf, well done. Thank you. Well done. Lexi and Aaron, thank you. Who knows what goes on with that screen? Because it worked perfectly yesterday when I tested it, and that sucker's got a mind of its own. But then, I guess maybe that even points us to the fact that we live in a world that works, but doesn't work perfectly, and doesn't work the way it should. So we talked about last week, that Jesus came, and he said, you shouldn't be surprised that you've got to be born again. Or the language we use in this new year is having a new birth. But more than just a new birth for us human beings, get the, we've read this morning about how it's not just about us that's supposed to become new, but this whole world will become new. Maybe renewed, almost as though somebody hit the reboot button or turned on, turned off, and then turned back on your computer, your TV to make it work. That there will be something that totally changes, that it will be made new. But not just made new like the same way it was, but made new in a better, improved, great, incredible way. It'll be a redeemed and healed world where there's no death, there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no weeping, there's no mourning. It's only those of us who've lost things in our lives that will be made whole again. We wait for hope for that day when Jesus will be brought back. We wait for hope when Jesus comes back and heals this whole world. So we're waiting as we wait for this whole new earth. So it's a whole new world. At least that's why Jesus will come back. But when I say that, a whole new world, maybe this comes to your mind. Let's see if this video clip works or not. What do you think? You may know this from Aladdin. We'll find out if it works today or not. There we go. You're all thinking, that'd be better what you may ramble on about, probably. But 
they get the, the, the weird thing with the clip from Aladdin is this whole new world, but for them it's about this new relationship they have with each other, and for both of them to find freedom, her from the palace, being stuck as a princess, him being a street urchin, a whole new world. But they're even settling because when the Bible talks about a whole new world, it's after those of us who are Christians have become new creatures, that God's moving work in our lives to completely change who we are, and then ultimately the whole world will be made new or redeemed. Now reading through it, it's, it's tricky to understand the language, because in Revelation when it talks about a whole new world, the word there in Greek could either be a new world, as though God just said, whoop, throw out the old, in with the new. Or it's a renewed world. I, my guess is renewed. What that means is God uses this thing that we're living on now, and everything is made new, completely and holy. But that's one of those things where we can just argue about it, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's one of those technicalities. This suffice whether it's a renewed world or a whole new world. Not to get lost, the greater thing is that everything will be made new. The way it was supposed to be. Now for each of us, we probably have some things in life that we'd like to have changed. There are probably some things in life that we wish weren't this way. So here's your assignment for right now. Again, if the screens are not fighting with us too much. If you're, here's your assignment. Get in the groups of three to six people. Y'all love when I do this, don't you? For those of your guests today, just roll your eyes, go out and have fun, preach when you go out for lunch today, whatever it may be, because the point is there to talk with a few folks about what you would love to see change. What is one thing that you would change about this world? It could be pretty silly. Like for me, I love that mosquitoes have warning signals. So you knew they were coming. Wouldn't that be hilarious? You can hear them. I don't know if that's the noise they'd make, but that's the noise in my head they'd make when they showed up. Or it could be something a lot more serious. Because I lost my dad to cancer, and my mom almost lost her life to cancer, definitely for me, it would be getting rid of cancer. That's the one thing I could think of that would be more serious. So whatever it is, get in groups of three to six, you have two minutes. I know y'all love this, but there's a point to it. So you've already got your assignment, if you're uncomfortable with it, bear with this to fall here. But friends, share with a couple folks what you'd love to see change. There you go. You have two minutes. Hurry up. Take your time. Well, I think we're such a big group here for our kids. <laughs> Disregard for, for humanity, period. You can say that again. 
that up. Yeah, the value for worship by the amazing church word for you know, post-coming church, as well as the value of human life. Yeah, it's pretty, we minimize it in many ways. Yeah, Larry? This might be a good raging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I saw someone else's hand as well. I just missed it. I'm sorry. A little bit late, Larry. But... <laughs> <laughs> and for those who came with the children's message, often they're in the exact opposite. I can't wait to be counted in the 16. I can't wait till I'm in. Anyone else? Thank you for those of you who are. Brave enough and you know, willing to share what it is. Whole world was Christian? Yeah. Yeah. That's my wish. I think you're right, Joe. Yeah. Except for the snow part. <laughs> Every other wish you have actually comes to be. It's not here yet. It comes to be. Right now, we're in a world that I, I want to say it's broken or it's out of whack. It's not the way it's supposed to be. For example, these are not my newest glasses. This is the old pair. Because I decided I'd fix my old glasses myself about a week or so ago and bent them a little bit in the middle. <laughs> what does that tell you? Do not let me borrow your glasses. Henceforth, Although T and I knew we need to go to the eye doctor, let's just say that suddenly that appointment moved up much more early. So uh, we went Thursday to the eye doctors to get a, our new glasses. I have my script in. So right now I'm using the old pair. This is the pair I moved to Mercer with. It's a good pair of glasses, but if I lay it down on a flat surface, you can tell where it's sort of been bunged up a little bit. That's the technical term for out of whack. The screws here and the, 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 in this area here for the arms. It, it doesn't rest perfectly level. It's got a little bit of a tilt to it. Not only that, but the glasses are, they're not really scratched, thankfully, because if I buy plastic lenses without coating, they are, they're, they're 30 seconds, they're toast. But the nose guards are a little icky inside there. Not only that, they don't rest on my face the way they probably should. And there's a nice crack in the glass here. So if I look, if you look at me, y'all are back to going to look at me and say, you goober, what do you do? Well, quite simply, I wear glasses, and I am a bull in a china shop when it comes to most things in life, including glasses. I have to take care of these glasses because they're the best pair I have. They aren't perfect, but they're the best pair I have. If I want to dispose of them, well, y'all look really fuzzy. Most of you don't look better. <laughs> I'm nearsighted, which means I can still read but on the far side, it's a lot ickier, so I can't really, I know what the sign on the back um, banner is, but I can't read the words on it without my glasses. <laughs> it's like the world we live in, are my glasses here. They're good, it's good, it's not the way it's supposed to be. It's okay, it's not the way it's supposed to be. Also, if I treat these with disrespect, I'm really in trouble. I've got to pull out the glasses, that if I put them on my face, they almost, they start to go to the side, and so they just want to fall right off. So I've got to take care of these as well. Which is why we talked about what we talked about with the children's message. Just because the world's messy doesn't mean you just throw it out. It means we're called to take care of it as well. That being said, something better's coming. It's called a whole new world. There will be something that comes in. It's a whole new world. We're going to breeze through the book of Revelation here right now. So if you want to buckle up, go right ahead. We're going to read through chapters 21 through 22. Let me rephrase that. We're not going to read it because y'all would just go to sleep, most likely. You can read it on your own. It's fascinating for the reading here. It's as much, it seems to be both telling us what will be, both in reality as well as metaphorically, and it's hard to determine which is which. So I'm just going to read it in my abbreviated form here for what I read. So here we go. It's a whole new world, and this is how the Bible describes it. A new heaven and new earth will be made, or maybe better said, a renewed heaven, a renewed earth where sin and pain are no longer reality. The sea, the symbolic place for opposition to God, the sea will be wiped away. The new Jerusalem will come down with crystal clear high walls encrusted with jewels. The, it's, it's as clear as Jasper is. I don't know what Jasper is, but that's what the Bible keeps describing it as. And these, it has 12 gates around the walls for the new Jerusalem. And each gate is guarded by an angel. 
On the walls are written the names of the twelve apostles who followed Jesus. Jerusalem becomes the center of life for all of life on earth. It's got golden ground and golden streets. And it describes the gold in one place as though it was as clear as glass. I have no clue how gold would be as clear as glass, but that's how it's described. God will be with God's people. Tears are wiped away because mourning and death are no more, as the old order of things has passed away. Jesus will be making everything new. We will then be able to drink from the spring of the water of life. What's that mean? Everlasting life. All who are black, idolaters, murderers, etc., those who do not know Jesus and look like it in their lives will die the second death. That's being thrown into the fire, into hell, the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Those who don't know follow Jesus are not allowed entrance into the new Jerusalem. Jesus becomes the center of life. There isn't a temple or church as Jesus centers the new Jerusalem. He gives off light greater than any lamp. They don't need any lights. They don't have to worry about light bulbs burning out. He is the source of light. There is no night. It's always day. If you're going to wonder about how you can sleep, my guess suggestion would be is that we don't need to sleep. But that's my guess. And through the center of the New Jerusalem is the river of the water of life flowing from Jesus' throne down the middle of the street. How's that work? Think you've got a street and you've got a river flowing right through it. We call that you know, water line break in our day and age. Here, this is how it's supposed to be. It's a river of life flowing down the middle of the street. Not like that, but then it's got the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Or let me double check. Let me get this right. The tree of life, which was in the Garden of Eden. Please forgive me, I messed up there. The tree of life, not only is there in the middle of the city, this new Jerusalem, it's on both sides of the river of life. How's that work? You and I know if you ever walk by a river, you see roots are starting to stand up on the side of the on the side of a street, on the side of a creek bed or a river, that tree's gonna fall. Instead, the tree of life is in the middle and on the with roots, and I guess into both sides of the stream, into the street. Give yourself crops, 12 months of the year. Every month, it bears fruit that you can eat of. You remember from Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2, oops, they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they were no longer allowed to eat of the tree of life. Here, in the New Jerusalem, we will be free to eat of it, to experience everlasting life. No longer lives the curse Resolve of Adam and Eve eating of the fruit. No one lives the curse which leads to death, as death has died. Instead, all can see Jesus face to face as he centers life in the New Jerusalem. He's sitting on this throne in the center of town. I don't get how this works. It doesn't seem to make sense to my finite mind. And yet that's what the book of Revelation suggests to us. Maybe it means this. Everything in life centers around Jesus. The one who died on the cross for us, the one who was there in the very beginning, creating everything, as John's Gospel tells us. That everything in life centers around Jesus. This whole new world won't have pain, won't have suffering, won't have mourning. Every tear will be wiped away. It's all been done away with. And then Jesus centers life. Can't wait for that. Our reading from Romans suggests that all of creation, animals, the earth itself, is groaning in eager expert expectation for the day when the sons of God will be revealed, which, as far as I can gather, the day when Jesus returns and begins to change everything. The whole earth is groaning for Jesus to come back and to make the new Jerusalem a reality, make this old world a new world. What about us? You aching for that day? Well, here's one way to be intentional about allowing that yearning, that aching for Jesus to come back. Here's one way to make that happen. Our assignment for next week, you've seen it for the last three weeks if you've been here um, this month. This is your assignment for this week. You can find it in your programs or inside your bulletins, as you may call it. Um, the assignment we've had for the last few weeks are real. 
What's one thing you'll work on this year in your relationship with God? How is it going? Be honest with yourself. I'm already flopping in some regards with what I want to work on. That doesn't mean you quit just because you make mistakes. So you have to keep going. If you haven't done it before, I encourage you as January ends, as we look towards February, looking at what we believe with the Apostles' Creed in mind. What is it that you want to work on in your relationship with God? Because, friends, if Revelation is accurate, everything revolves around Jesus and this whole new earth. The world we live in is messy, it is screwy. The things that you wanted to come about, or at least that we mentioned this morning, except for warm snow. <clears throat> Those things come about. Now I can't find where I wrote it down, which is great. Here we go. That we actually value life, and that we value worship. Governments would actually work the way they're supposed to, because it sure sounds that way in the book of Revelation. Not only that, but aging's gone. Think about that one for a second. No more arthritis when you wake up. If you're younger, no more getting colds. The flu doesn't bother you. If you twist your ankle or hit your finger with a hammer, it doesn't hurt. No more pain. I won't need no stinking glasses, unless, of course, they're fashionable in heaven. I don't know how that works. I'm guessing not. No more need. It's gone. No more balding. If you want to grow a beard in 30 seconds, it might just happen that way. I need 30 years. No more cancer. No more pain. No more separation from those you love who know Jesus Christ. No more addictions to the things that seem to control us. No more doubt and worry and hurt. And that's just for us. Let alone the whole world where suddenly this global warming, snow that's cold, maybe it will become warm. Everything changes. But we don't have to worry about these greater things. There won't be wars. They're done. It's a whole new world. And yet, friends, this morning, when we read it, I hope you hear that again. The Revelation, as well as the book of Isaiah, and even more so the book of Ezekiel, and the book of Daniel, at times they can get into, they call fancy church word apocryphal, which for me hints at the idea of the Something that comes with the end of time. That being said, it's often future casted, which means we don't know what it will look like. They're giving us a hint. It's sort of like whenever I sit down with some kids on Marvelous Mondays, and they tell me a story about what something looked like. Why do I say it that way? Listen to a youngster tell you what life is like, or, the men, or what they saw happen. <clears throat> there are times when my four-year-old nephew Mason tells me what happened. If I hadn't been there, I would not believe what he said. Somehow he was flying. Here we go. I've got enough time for this. This is how the story goes. So, I guess Mia, the two-year-old niece, she fell down. She was crying in an agony. I forget what it exactly happened. I wasn't at the house, and it wasn't like on my shoulders. Mason told the story this way to Tina. And then I ran upstairs and said, Tina, to go see what was wrong with Mia. And then I ran and got my mom and told my mommy what to go do. And mommy went and did what I told her. Keep dad said, Mason, what are you talking about? You heard your sister crying, you kept playing video games. <laughs> Mason's story was one thing compared to maybe what reality was. We read stuff like from the book of Revelation here. We're getting a hint, but it's not everything that will be. Or we just can't grasp what the author's trying to say. Like, I, I do know this much. It's going to be made new. There's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no hanging. We will be made whole. Not only that, but the world around us will put right the way it was supposed to be. <laughs> Until that day, we have hope. Because if God brought Jesus back from the dead, then God can do anything. And if Jesus came back from the dead, and the nail marks didn't hold him back, the holes in his feet from where they put the nail through his feet to hold him onto the cross didn't hurt him so he could walk. That he wasn't bleeding from the side where they stuck him with the spear. That it doesn't sound like the nail marks in his head from the crown of thorns we're still bleeding. If God's able to do that and bring about a new, revived person in Jesus, imagine what he can do around us. Until that day, we're waiting with hope. We've got a world, so I like my glasses. It's good. But we also know it can be better. Treat it with respect. 
until that day, day Jesus comes back and makes everything right. With these glasses, I also know that something better is coming. That fills me with hope. May God's hope fill you as well. Amen and amen. Friends, if you would, would you pray with me? You can find this prayer on the screen behind me, but my encouragement to you is this. Just repeat after me as we talk with God. Close your eyes and turn your palms up toward heaven. So if you would, let us pray. Lord God, loving Father, I love you. Thank you for hope. We have hope for a new world. We have hope that you didn't give up on us. We have hope because Jesus rose from the dead. We have hope because Jesus is coming back. We pray with hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let's sing together as we sing. Thank you. 